Hi, in this slide I want to sort of relate a story that was told very ably by a fascinating writer named Kevin Kelly and he had a book called Out of Control and then it described a uh, sort of a special graphics technology conference that was going on in Las Vegas back in 1991 and there was some genius guy named Lauren Carpenter and you can imagine a monster convention hall and in it are 5,000 people waving wands that they've been given as they came in and they're little paddles I mean it's a long stick and on the top is a little square and on one side is green and the other side is red and uh, so they're all waving their pixels in the air because there's an eye in the sky at the back of the convention center that picks up the green or the red and represents it on a big screen in front at the front of the, uh, the auditorium and all of a sudden they hear a voice come over the PA system kind of like God saying all right everybody play Pong and there's a screen where the old ancient game of, of Pong is there and he said everybody on the left is the paddle on the left green makes it go up and red makes it go down and everybody on the right uh, is the right paddle and if you think you're in the left or the right you're right play and it took a while, not you know, like a few seconds, for everybody to sort of get their paddles quickly to green or red to make the 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 the, the, the average uh, net of all their activity start to move the paddles. And at first it was sort of jerky, etc. But very quickly the whole audience was all moving up together and down together, etc., to basically play pong against the other side of the auditorium. Then the screen went blank, and then there was a, a big circle. And, and you could just see all the pixels there and, and he said all right within the circle uh, make the number five well this is a little bit you know it's like left right up down this is a little bit more complicated so people fooled around but very slowly a very fuzzy five started to outline come 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 about and as it as it did the the, the quick the it, it sort of very quickly become uh, clarified and uh, so I'm doing here five and then he said, all right, do four, three, two, one. So they really were getting good at this. And then he sort of stepped up to the last most difficult thing. And he said, all right, now what you're looking at is you're in a, you're in a cockpit. So it's a, a pilot simulation of an airplane. And actually the landing strip is over to the left. So you people on the left-hand side of the auditorium can make the plane go up and down and you people on the right side can make it pitch left or right so land the plane so they all fumbled around and the plane sort of jerked around and they had some little alt there's a little altimeter you could see so that you could see the plane coming in to the to the ground not necessarily on the landing strip but you could see the plane coming to the ground and you could very quickly see that the, if the plane was going to fall too short or too fall far of the runway there was sort of a target that was to hit he did, and, 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 and Lauren didn't tell anybody, anybody. it was just self-evident. So what happened was they started to, you know, veer the plane and it kind of was rocking back and forth, et cetera, and it started to move down and, and the people that could do up and down realized at the last minute, you know, this plane is going to crash and people started yelling, you know, nose up, nose up, because nobody really had thought about, well, what do we do if we get to there too early and crash? But a few people started yelling, and, and sure enough, the whole group sort of self-flocked like birds, and, and they all pulled together, and they pulled the nose up, and they, you know, flew the plane up in the air again, and then they, the other side knew what they did. They steered the plane in a big circle, and it came around, and they landed the plane perfectly, and people were screaming and hollering and doing chest bumps and high fives and so forth. So what happened here? You know, basically somebody says, here's the big picture. Here are the simple things we're trying to accomplish it. Figure it out. And what did he pay these people? Nothing. They, they you know, they, 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 they want to be part of a team. They want to they do the right thing. They want to work together. They want to succeed together. Uh, and what was interesting is when you think about flocking quickly, you know, if you see a, a whole flock of starlings and they all of a sudden shift direction or a, 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 a big, a, you know, group of fish and, and a school of fish and all of a sudden they dart one way or that way. How do they do that and how do they know? Uh, so it turns out that if we can get the big stuff right and let the people do the big stuff because they know what's in it for them, we can tap into a lot of free order and a lot of victorious uh, team energy. And that's what the, the goal 
or one of the goals is of the six boundary system that I'm talking about in this whole module. So one of the tests will be as we start to feed information into the system and create our boundaries, will we start to see what I call hobby energy. In other words, people wake up at five minutes to five and they do wheelies out of the parking lot to go home and, and spend ridiculous amounts of time and energy and focus on what we might think are ridiculous things, but every brain to his, to his, uh, his pleasure. Also, when they're home and think about how they live their life on what you don't pay them, you know, the, for a lot of people that are on the payroll, I, I know managers would have a tough time trying to figure out how to live on what they're paying some of their employees. But boy, they are bartering up and down the street and in and outside their clan. I mean, there's a sort of a big underground economy and, and you know, people live a, a, a pretty okay life when you think about all the different forms of, of how they hustle and, 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 and bring value into the household and exchange value up and down the street uh, in the neighborhood. So I'd love to see that kind of hobby energy. Notice it begins with an H and an E, H-E, and home economics coincidentally starts with an H and an E. So let's call it H-E squared. How do we get home hobby energy, home economics savvy on the job? And then ideally it would be like, like self-locking birds. It would be very strategic e agile. So if a number two most important target customer called up at 530 after the phones are shut down and said, I'm in a jam, can you help me? The answer is yes, and it happens. That's our goal. Thank you.